Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show. It's us. It's Jan and Nicole over at Penetanguishing Centennial Museum. And it's me, Nahani, and Genevieve over here at Heronia Museum. We're still meeting every week on Zoom to explore our collection and challenge each other to dig out things we don't get to normally dig out. This is a makeup episode. I had a little technical difficulty last week and our episode got lost, so we're redoing it for everybody because apparently some people missed it and asked where we were, which is awesome. We love that you love us and what we're doing for you. So yeah, here we go. We were challenged to, uh, I think we pit it, uh, we challenged you, Penetanguishing, yes. to bring out our prettiest dress. And so we'll go first. And Genevieve, what do we have? Okay, I have this wonderful dress. It's probably the oldest piece of clothing in our collection. It dates to the 1830s, probably the mid 1830s. It is wonderful and it's very difficult uh -huh. to see. I can stand back here. Ta da! Oh, oh wow. wow. And it is very, very typical of its period. Uh, earlier, in the 1830s, you'd find those massive leg of mutton sleeves, padded sleeves. But this one, uh, this dress is a little bit more restrained. It uh, has a very exuberant coloring with red, green, and purple. And, and um, on, a, on a light colored ground. Uh, very typical of the period is the simple, um, simple bodice with a point very um, full skirt and I'll give you an idea of uh, because this is on a padded hanger it doesn't really give you an idea of what it would look like uh, if it was filled with a real woman so I've got <laughs> Are you gonna put it on up here oh I can't put it on this thing has a 23 inch waist there's no way I could fit into that <laughs> but here is what you would find a dress look like it oh my gosh. got really wide. It accentuates the shoulder. So you've got, um, and then you've got a massive skirt, a long full skirt. And that's what all that pleating does. It allows for uh, a bustle to be tied around the woman's waist to hold it out on the sides and give you a nice bottom. Mm. Um, and we've also got this, which is really typical of the period. We've got, uh, it's boned down the center and we've got folded uh, pleats again, folded pieces of fabric that move onto the shoulder and kind of accentuate that width. And then it moves down into a nice narrow waist, which would be corseted underneath uh, to create that restriction. And um, yeah, and then you've got the long full plain skirt. This is a day dress, so it's not something that a woman would typically be wearing. Um, a lot of the more elaborate dresses that you do see are probably uh, gowns meant for evening use. So this is something that a woman would be wearing during the day. The upper part is lined with a, a polished cotton, plain co polished cotton. But this is not, uh, the rest of it is not lined. And I have to say, it's a really terrible fabric. It's made of some sort of wool, although it's really, really fine. It's really scratchy. And it's uh. not something that I'd want to we uh, wear. The shoulders are, are the, sorry, the sleeves are short sleeves. And I have seen um, from the mid 1830s, a lot of the uh, emphasis rather than that big leg of mutton puffy upper shoulder, upper sleeve, you've got a more restrained kind of sleeve with uh, folds and poofs right here. And then um, a wider sleeve down at the bottom. We don't have that with this. I'm not sure if it was altered in the past or whether there was a separate kind of sleeve made of a, a finer um, like net material. Uh, but regardless, it's still a wonderful, beautiful dress and it's in wonderful condition. No stains, no holes. Uh, wow. It's a terrific example of women's clothing from the period. It's so, so perfect. You, I know it's not a reproduction, but it almost would think it was because it it's, it's unbelievably in good, you know, the condition is amazing. It is. Who owned it? Like who did, who donated it? It Do you know? oh dear me! It did come from Betty. Oh now I can't remember her last name. It was her great great grandmother's. She had 
immigrated to Canada in 1830 with all of her children and her husband. Mm -hmm. um, I think by that point, she had about six or seven kids. So that's why I find it really remarkable that this thing has a 23 inch waist. Because yeah. I know that after having three kids, there's certainly no, no way that I could get my muscles to squeeze that tightly anymore. Um, so she came to Canada, the family settled in Guelph in 1830, and they remained there until Betty Ann's father, who was a pharmacist, moved to Midland. Mm -hmm. Wow, so not only that, that dress was worn here in Canada, you would think that that was just sort of like something worn in Britain in more mm -hmm. high society and not here in the 1830s. Yeah, and I guess it's That's remarkable funny. that it's, it, lasted as long normally yes. clothing mm -hmm. cut down and refashioned so it's nice uh, that the family decided for whatever reason to preserve it mm -hmm. yeah they obviously need to preserve it right mm -hmm. <laughs> what have you got Penetang Machine Centennial Museum well what we have is um we have the upper portion we are missing the skirt. So it's, it's, oh, this is difficult to see. I'm trying to let you see all the embellishment on it. There's a lot of bead work. Oh, yes, you can see that. Yeah. Um, I can't get the right angle. Can you see you can it now? See it. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. So it is um, also of a very tiny waist. Uh, there is embellishments on the sleeves as well. There, you can see that better. Really and, well, yeah. yeah, and in the inside is like a really handsome, like classy looking pinstripe. And it also does like your dress have some boning in it. But this boning has been sewn in separately and it's been sewn in by hand. The rest of the garment is machine made. So there's also this um, loop here, which I'm assuming would attach either to a bustle or to the skirt itself. And there's, it's to hook and eyes. But if, um, we don't know for sure, like this is from 1890, but we don't have a, an owner name for it at all. And so we don't really know a lot about it, but um, if we might even speculate that it could be a mourning garment because it's from 1890, it would still be within the Victorian period. Um, if it was a mourning garment, it would be worn for two years by the widow. And, uh, but in contrast, the gentleman, if he was widowed, he was expected to move on and marry again as quickly as possible. So um, yeah, the, the women wore their, were in full mourning for two years. And so this would uh, be something that they might wear. And they were not um, expected to be seen in society except to go to church. So their life was quite restricted. Yeah. That, so that... I want to tell you about the pleating here. We have pleating as well. And interestingly enough, the pleating down the front here is also separate. It's um, not pleated right into the jacket, but it has been sewn into the shoulder seam here so it's it's rather separate oh. wow and there's the back yeah so the beads themselves are black glass beads and at first i thought that they were all individually sewn onto the garment but it appears that they they're on like cording and then all the embellishment has been created through the, um, the cording, the way that's just been draped on the fabric. So that's kind of interesting as well. And there is glass beads around the neck as well. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yes, so yeah, that's I, our piece for today. That's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. it. Betty, Betty and Tatum, that's who donated. I'm sorry, Tatum family, I've remembered. <laughs> that's awesome so this was our makeup episode we did it we got our pretty dresses out then we threw out the challenge for marine heritage that episode is already out but next week we are covering tourism tourism yeah. in north simcoe so let's see what we can get out for that i'm glad we got to make up this episode for all those people who missed it and we'll see you on 
Wednesday next week, as usual, on the Show and Tell Show, as long as technology works. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.